CNIB, 100 years, a century of change. Our story begins in 1918. Canada had forged its national identity on the battlefields of Europe, and victory brought dreams of a bright future. But for many, those dreams, that future, felt impossibly out of reach. The Great War and the Halifax Explosion heightened awareness of the need for organized social services for blind people in Canada. At the time, education and employment opportunities were few, braille books were rare, and so too often blindness meant poverty and dependence. Into this void stepped seven men, five among them blind. Their bold ambition? To change the lives of their fellow blind citizens, restore their hope, and create a Canada where their dreams could take flight. Together, these visionary volunteers formed the Canadian National Institute for the Blind. The new CNIB, led by Colonel Edwin Baker, took on a wide-reaching mandate. We served veteran and civilian clients in residential facilities and through itinerant teachers who traveled the country to provide home-based instruction in blindness skills. Literacy was the domain of the CNIB library, which predated our founding by over a decade and distributed a growing collection of braille and talking books. CNIB commissaries, industrial workshops, catering services, and job placement programs empowered our clients with the chance to earn a living wage and prove their abilities to the sighted world. Through advocacy, we put the rights of blind Canadians on the national agenda. Among the early victories was the passing in 1930 of the monumental Blind Voters Act, allowing blind citizens to vote for the first time. Steadily, CNIB's reach expanded across the country. By the 50s, we had become the largest organization of our kind in the world, serving more than 17,000 people from coast to coast to coast. The 60s, 70s, and 80s were a time of rapid cultural, political, and technological change. A time for CNIB to push boundaries, realigning our role to reflect the dreams of this new generation. CNIB embraced technology early on, recognizing its potential to revolutionize the lives of people with sight loss. We pioneered computer education programs. In our library, we made literacy more portable through books on cassette and produced books more quickly using computerized braille. We broadened our work in blindness prevention through research and public education, eye care services for remote communities, and the creation of Canada's first eye bank. CNIB modernized our rehabilitation and employment services, moving away from residential housing and sheltered workshops and towards community-based programs that would foster inclusion and integration. Meanwhile, clients and families were emboldened by their experiences at our outdoor camp facilities, including the CNIB Lake Joseph Center, there, a range of amazing programs provided young blind leaders with opportunities to build new skills and push their limits in a safe, accessible environment. CNIB's impact and influence grew over this period, attracting a host of high-profile allies like Walter Gretzky, Stevie Wonder, Bill Gates, Terry Kelly and others who helped put the spotlight on blind Canadians advancing awareness and inclusion. The new millennium brought the most dramatic paradigm shifts yet. Canada's aging population had created unprecedented demand for services, with our client base growing to more than 100,000 by the year 2000. So, CNIB set an ambitious agenda for change to prepare for the future. The CNIB library was transformed into a state-of-the-art accessible digital library. Then, in 2014, we integrated the service into the public library system, followed by landmark changes in Canadian copyright law allowing accessible books to be shared internationally under the Marrakesh Treaty. Together, these groundbreaking changes would expand access to books and secure the right to read for people with sight loss and other print disabilities. Then, arguing blind Canadians had a right to rehabilitation, we led successful campaigns in every province to integrate these essential services into the healthcare system. And in 2017, we created Vision Loss Rehabilitation Canada to oversee this vital work. Having made these forever changes, we are once again evolving our work to respond to the needs of a new time. Through a range of innovative programs, today's CNIB is more determined than ever to see blind Canadians stand proud in their abilities, speak with their own voices, and thrive in every aspect of modern life. 
The last 100 years have brought remarkable change and progress for people with sight loss, beyond what could have been imagined back in 1918. People with sight loss do sports and activities and use cutting edge technology. Today, as we stand on the threshold of our next century, we celebrate our inspiring achievements, grounded in the vision of our founders and driven by passion, ingenuity, and a fearless embrace of change. It's a crowning achievement for Canada, for CNIB, and for the millions of Canadians impacted by blindness we have served. No longer beyond reach, their bold dreams are just the beginning. A smiling young man raises his white cane triumphantly above his head. CNIB's logo features the name CNIB next to a green circle with the words 100 years and the tagline, a century of change.